Howdy folks, welcome to Tiny Tent Show, episode number 42. It's amazing. It is a show that will feature all new material from two tent show stalwarts, Yasmin Bowers and Randy Sabine. More on that and their music and what they have planned for you in a moment. I will also be checking in with Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua Executive Director Terry Mateer so that she can address the state of the canvas, as it were, and also give you an update on the upcoming Valentine's Day night gala fundraiser. Mark your calendar for February 14th at 6.30 p.m. And stay tuned for more details from Terry. It's an online gala. You can attend no matter where you're sitting right now. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support, past, present, and future. We always welcome your donations. There is a Donate Now button live in the comments section of this show right now. Or you can simply contact the folks at Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua. The best place to find that contact information is www.bigtop.org. If you dig down in there, you can even find an old-fashioned phone number. You can, you can call them right up on the old rotary dial if you want. My, my parents still have, as their main, their primary phone, a rotary dial. And so I'm happy to say I have a 13-year-old who knows how to operate a rotary dial phone. All right, to the show now. Recently, Yasmin Bowers and Randy Sabine visited our neighbors at Stage North Theater in Washburn. Washburn, not Washburn. That shows you're not from around here if you call it Washburn. It's Washburn. They went to Stage North Theater quite literally just down the road from us, uh, from the tent. And they recorded all new material for this song. And Yasmin will lead us off tonight with an array of tunes, ranging from her fresh take on the Joni Mitchell classic, Both Sides Now, to a medley of songs drawn from her beloved Cuban music, to her own, and I'm speaking when I say her, of Yasmin, not Joni Mitchell, to Yasmin's own originals. Please welcome the tremendous, heartfelt talent of Yasmin. and flows of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air and feather canyons everywhere I've looked at clouds that way but now they only block the sun snow on everyone so many things I would have done but clouds got in my way I've looked at clouds from both sides now from up and down and still Another show, you leave him laugh. 
everything when you go and if you care don't let them know don't give yourself away i've looked at love from both sides now from win and lose and still Circus crowds have looked at life that way, but now old friends they're acting strange, and they shake their heads and tell me that I've changed. Well, something's lost, but something's gained in living every day. This next song is about a city that I hold very dear, a country, the island of Cuba, which I fell in love with a long time ago and continues to be one of the greatest sources, sources of inspiration, musically and otherwise. A lot of amazing people there. So this goes out to everyone. Um, on the beautiful island of Cuba that is suffering a lot right now. So please send your love and we'll think of them.
tune by a woman named Madeline Perot. She's a very inspiring singer to me right now and songwriter. Discovered her a few years ago. And um, I think this song speaks to uh, the time we're in. It, she wrote it, I think, two years ago. Um, but it just, it has this feeling of... Um, we're in tough times, and yet we have to, f well, we hope to find a way to um, still love and enjoy our lives to as much as we can while doing our best to work for a brighter future. So um, this is called We Might As Well Dance. See? 
easy to see things going wrong now it's easy to wallow in a sad song it's easy to cry over all that's gone now but i believe that we must carry on i hear you saying that our best days are past us i've seen you walking through the rubble and the stone yes i know there's a list of disasters but time's gonna soothe the soul so we might as well dance in the light of the moon yeah we might as well dance we'll be leaving here soon we might as well dance Possibility. Just a little love song for you. Possibly the sweetest thing I've ever seen before, and you are very possibly the possibility I've been waiting for. way I've lost my way before and you have taken hold of me and every part of me longs for more but now the sun will rise 
rise And we will cut our ties and catch our planes To far away cities And that will be A possibility we'll never know So this next song is one of mine that I wrote a few a few years back. It goes out to anyone who has experienced rejection, which really sucks. And um, but it was kind of sad before. I had a very somber mood, and with my band, my wonderful band, uh, Beat Zero, we decided to rehash it and make it a happy rejection song. So I hope you like it. <laughs> again me and pain were getting to be good friends it all came falling down but I could build it up again the world will stay the same and you will still be there but I will never know all the ways I Here we are today, the sun's too bright, just want to hide away, but I will face the world, I'll take it on, like a warrior, and life will carry on, and I'll still be your friend, but you will never know all the ways I dream was mine and mine alone and I, I climbed too high, I climbed too high, now there's nothing left but me to break the fall. Question will remain. 
pain I'll be undone for a little while But you grasp on me in time Will be nothing more than a memory And I will walk away With my head up to the sky And you mine and mine alone and I, I climb too high, I climb too high, now there's nothing left but me to break the fall, mm. to break the fall. Chautauqua uh, fame, you could say, from 10 years ago, I think it was, actually 11, 12, oh geez, 12 now, in 2009, um, this song, I won the songwriter competition of the year um, at the Big Top, and I had a great, the great honor of um, opening for Nancy Griffiths after that, and um, this is just a nice run. So this song has been around for a while. It's a topic that is still very much relevant. Um, this is a story that I wrote about a man that I knew who was an immigrant in this country and struggling with life, um, making ends meet. And so this, I, I really love that this song has stuck around and it, it's got new life. So I've changed it up a little bit since um, back in 2009 and this is called Working in the Shadows. Thank you. 
Driving too fast in his big red truck The cop pulls him over, he curses his luck They ask for his papers and to see his ID But the problem is there ain't nothing to see So they take him to jail And they ship him on home Like his life has all gone wrong As the days go by, the crack in his heart Gets bigger and bigger, tearing him apart So he sneaks back in To start over again Thank you all so much for tuning in, and it's been an honor to be a part of these tiny tent shows over the last year. I'm grateful that we've been able to keep the energy going and stay connected. Um, so we're in the home stretch, hopefully, and stay in touch. You can find me at yasminemusic.com, and um, and of course follow the the big top as well. And we'll see you soon. Yasmin Bowers, folks. How wonderful it will be to see her perform in person again one day. After a year of historic uncertainty, the Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua organization has navigated daunting challenges, with more to come. And yet, there have been victories, successes, and good news to share. And who better to share the inside scoop then the executive director who has steered this ship through all the rocks and chop, Terry Mateer. I caught up with Terry recently via the ever ubiquitous Zoom. Well, welcome, Terry. Hello, Mike. You're up there up north, and uh, maybe you could give us a little report on the state of things. How can you give a little report on the state of things after the year you've just navigated? Oh, I know. I know. Well, the whole world's out of whack. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, our world at Big Top is, um, uh, it's been a year. <laughs> but um, I guess, you know, the big news is here it is 2021, and it's our 35th anniversary season. So that's just super exciting. And it's um, a strange year for it, but it's something to to celebrate anyway. So that's what we're planning on doing. Um, 2020 was unexpected, you know, no summer. Didn't see that one coming. Um, but, uh, you know, when we looked in the spring and said no summer season, what's Big Top gonna 
uh, look like at the end of 2020, we thought it was going to be a pretty bleak picture. And in fact, it's not a bleak picture at all. So our donors and supporters have stepped up and said, Big Top's important to us. You know, we're all kind of thinking in this weird year what's important to us and it's our health and it's our friends and family. And the arts are important to people and Big Top is important to people. So they've all been stepping up and making sure that we're gonna be okay. And um, it's, it's been amazing. It's been, our people are amazing and I really appreciate all of them. You know, they send us notes and letters and, and cheer us on and it's super heartwarming. Yeah, so. it's lovely to see some of the comments that come in during Tiny Ten Show to see the area where the person is watching. It's not all yep. just a cluster in Bayfield County. It's all over the place. And then just some of the kind words, not even specific to the performances, but just in general, the encouragement that comes in is very, very, yeah. very helpful. So you mentioned the 35th year and yeah, you have sure. uh, one of, I'm sure, many events, the first of many events to uh, celebrate that 35th year is coming up soon. Yeah, um, here's what we want to do. We want to have a party, you know, we can't get together, but we decided what might be fun for people. And we thought, well, Valentine's night, most people probably won't be going out to a restaurant this year or doing, you know, going to a concert or a show. So we thought, well, let's do something special for the folks that want to have something to look forward to. So for the 35th anniversary, we're going to do a, uh, we're calling it the 35 years of love gala event online putting together a great program for people. Um, we're gonna aim to raise $35,000 to kick off our 35th anniversary season and help us with operations for this year. So um, everybody at this point, mark your calendar, save the date. We'll start selling tickets to it next week. So people can get tickets, um, starts at $35. So pretty easy to you know, make a $35 donation and get a link to the event. Um, we got some surprises planned. Some great performers are going to be um, participating and providing some music. We've got some comedy. We've, of course, got the Blue Canvas Orchestra. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I've, I've seen a couple of your notes about the plans in the works. Yeah. And yeah, there's some, there's some pretty neat stuff, some, some fun behind the scenes stuff and some uh, fun interviews. And yeah. yeah. I think it's sure. going to be great. And then we're also planning um, well, for people that can do a higher donation, more than $35. We've got some special gala packages planned. So at different levels, you'll get a special gala box sent to you in the mail so that the night of the event, you can open your box and spread out your Bayfield treats. And we've got some, um, some big top memorabilia to like bring you back to the tent as if we're all sitting there. But um, you know, I guess in the middle of winter, we wouldn't generally be sitting there, but this not so much. Can. That's right. Yeah, I, I think you were going to do some silent auction items as well. We and, are going to um, do a I'm silent just, auction. Yep. So I was just trying to think if I knew anybody that wants to give something to the silent auction, you know, we'll, we'll definitely take it. Yeah, if you've got anything you can donate, and I was even just thinking myself right now, maybe I could find someone who could sign a couple of books and send them up that way. I love it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be super fun. Well, yeah, I'm looking we'll forward to it. And we'll have, I guess we have toolkits and we'll have banjos and I'm not sure what all, but that will wow. all start before the event. So February 8th, that will all be up online and you can do your bidding and um, preview everything and get fun. all get all your ducks in a row auction wise yeah, yeah. so um, I'm going to embarrass you just a little bit and just say that uh, I get to see sometimes behind the scenes I get to see your giant whiteboard we've talked about <laughs> that before but beyond the whiteboard this year just was exceptionally challenging and so to to be at this point in the in the shape that the big top is in is a, a credit to you and all the work that you've done and I wanted to recognize that and also you I know would want to recognize the staff and, oh, and volunteers an, and an all amazing the folks team oh yeah yeah so yeah. no we've been well, fortunate great. and I think you know with Ed Willett and you and all the folks that created this 
so that we didn't lose touch over this year. You know, we could keep doing what we do just in a new way. That's, um, I think it's made all the difference. Yeah, I, I just emailed someone this morning, um, not part of this group, someone else. And, and I talked about this year and separations and distance. But I said that we do have these, these few little threads and they're the things, you know, this year, it's those little connections that we're keeping so that we can find our way back to each other when we're finally allowed to do yeah. so. So thanks for all you're doing and, and really looking forward to a, a good time at the gala. Yeah, and we are, you know, just cautiously planning a 2021 season. It's uh, we're signing oh, up yeah. a lot of the artists that we had coming in 2020 that didn't get to appear. Um, we we are changing the dynamic of the tent. We won't have a full capacity next year while we're waiting for everyone to get vaccinated and everything to be more safe. But we are going to have a reduced capacity and. Um, at the gala, we're going to announce the first show announcements. We'll, uh -huh. We won't start selling tickets to 2021 until uh, the end of February. But at the gala, we'll announce some of the people that have signed up to come back. And um, we'll have probably about 350 to 400 seats total. So it is going to be a challenging year. Um, but fingers crossed, if everything goes according to you know how what they're saying then we'll be able to do it safely and we'll be able to have some live shows we have to stay be... flexible because things change but well that's our i'll stick up for you uh, in that respect uh, from from the perspective of the other side i've got bookings myself that we're doing for this year and every single one of them has an asterisk beside it it's just yeah. it's the way things are right now and i think it's perfectly uh, reasonable to understand that and yeah we move, we move forward with, with hope and, and reality. That's right. That's right. So thanks for everything oh. you're doing, Mike. I appreciate it. Oh, glad to be part of it. All right. We'll see you at the gala. All right. February okay. 14th. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Terry Mateer. We are lucky to have her at the helm. Back to the music now and our dear friend, Randy Sabine. Presented as the living embodiment of a multi-instrumentalist as he takes to violin, guitar, and piano to perform a wide range of material from the lovely summertime to invigorating boogie-woogie to a reinterpretation of the Beatles fixing a hole in his own distinctive style. Do it your way, Randy. Hi, hey, everybody. Thanks for coming to the show. Um, I'm not used to being alone on the stage. I'm either leading my own band or a, a side man in a, in a group. Um, that's one of the things I like about the Blue Canvas Orchestra is I can uh, step out and lead a tune or two and then step back and, and blend in with the rest of the group. I think the, for me, uh, the biggest advantage of being in a band is that you've got a lot of people around to hide all your mistakes. So this is a very challenging, it's very stressful for me and uh, I hope I don't uh, collapse right in front of you out of fear. Um, I always wanted to be in a band. That was the reason I got into music. Around third, fourth grade, there were a lot of great bands forming. One that caught my eye, uh, like many people, was the Beatles. And I thought that a great career for me would be to be a rock and roll drummer like Ringo. So I signed up for drum lessons when I was in fourth grade down in Rockford, Illinois. My drum teacher was also the high school orchestra director, and he put this in my hand, which is like the furthest thing from rock and roll I could imagine, and I ended up playing in a group called the High School Orchestra. I never dreamed of being in a group like that. Um, but I, uh, I took a violin lesson once a week from fourth grade until I went off to, to college from the same teacher, Hannah Armstrong, and she taught me basically everything I know about how to play the violin and after that, then I just figured out what to play on it. So this is an arrangement of a George Gershwin tune and uh, for solo violin. And it's called Variations on a Theme by Gershwin or a less fancy name, Summertime. <laughs> ¶¶ 
I'm going to do a tune uh, written by a blues guitar player, uh, Blind Willie Johnson. And this is a, a 
kind of interesting thing. That, you know, I grew up studying classical violin, being in the orchestra, but I never really identified with that music. And the music that I listened to was blues and folk music and rock and roll. So eventually I figured out that I could actually play those tunes um, on this classical violin. So here comes this blues tune called Soul of a Man. <laughs>
soul of a man? What is the soul of a man? What is the soul? What is the soul? What is the soul of a man? Well, this is the instrument that I play around the house uh, more often than the violin. Um, and I do a lot of writing on it, and I flesh it out for the band so that eventually I come up with the bass parts and the chords and the drums, and then I end up playing violin on it. But this is something I came up during the pandemic, and um, just a solo guitar arrangement for now, but maybe by the time it hits the big top stage, I have the, the whole band playing it. It's just a little 12-bar blues and B. Well, this next tune um, was actually probably the first guitar instrumental that I ever wrote. You just heard the, the most recent one, the Blues and B, and this goes back to probably college days, 1974, 75. Um, it's called The Journey, and I performed this first, I think, on Christmas Eve in my church down in Rockford, Illinois. I've been playing it for decades. The Journey. Thank you. 
Actually, the, the first instrument that I played was the piano. I took some lessons when I was in uh, second grade. Uh, a piano teacher actually came to our house, uh, gave some lessons to uh, my sister and myself. And um, of course, I hardly ever practiced. I'd rather be outside in the yard. But um, that lasted about a year. And then um, there was no music lessons until the drum lessons and then the violin. And the piano was always sitting around our family house, and my parents would play the piano. And um, it wasn't until the Sgt. Pepper's Beatles album came out, and I heard the song um, A Day in the Life, and had that beautiful piano part. And I started figuring out how to play that by ear, and uh, kind of uh, edging my way back into the piano from a different, a different angle. Um, I really love the piano. Again, it's an instrument that I play around the house more than the, the violin. My favorite piano player is Dr. John from New Orleans, and uh, I'm going to do um, an arrangement in my head of Dr. John meeting the Beatles on another tune from the Sgt. Pepper's album, Fixing a Hole. It starts with a little harpsichord. <laughs> A hole. Well, I've got one more tune to play for you. Thanks so much for tuning in and, and listening. Look forward to seeing you in person one of these days. 
Um, play another tune on the piano. One of my favorite styles of music is boogie woogie. And uh, if there's an afterlife, I'm going to come back as a, uh, a boogie woogie piano player down there in New Orleans. This is called Eight to the Bar. <laughs> Randy Sabine, one man band. Go ahead, throw him a chord change. See what he does with it. Well, folks, that is our Tiny Tent Show for tonight. Thank you, and thank you to our sponsors, Jim and Joy Perry, Northern State Bank, Mary Lou and Pat Irvine, Peggy and Ed Callahan, Edward Jones, Cole F. Nichols, ADPA, and Roger and Sharon Shaver. Thank you, and please see the Donate Now button in the comments section or contact the Big Top offices, as we said, through www.bigtop.org. Also, we are looking for silent auction items or sponsorship for the upcoming Valentine's Day Gala. You can uh, contact bigtop.org about that as well. Until we can sell tickets to the real deal, uh, this is what enables us to bring you some of the entertainers who you so much enjoy seeing in the tent when it's actually pitched, when we're there in real time and real space. We miss you, but we will see this through. And in these times more than ever, we thank you for all you're doing. We thank you for taking care of your neighbors, and I hope your neighbors are taking care of you. And now the time has come, not, not to say goodbye, not to bid you adieu as they do in France or the certain sections of Canada, but rather just to say, as they say where I'm from, well, I suppose, forward.